This is a very powerful time that we live in. And even in the midst of turmoil and controversy and so many changes happening to the church, God has taken us to a new place of freedom and victory. A few days ago, as I was praying, the Lord reminded me of this scripture in Genesis chapter 4. I want to share this with you. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies on the door or at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. This scripture is very telling because it establishes from the beginning. God sets a prophetic determination that we can have dominion and we can rule over sin and its effects. But also tells us that sin is always at the door, ready to jump on us, and it has a desire for us. But it is our action or lack of action that will determine if we're going to have victory over it or not. Now, when we think about sin, sometimes we go into this idea that there are actions, things that we shouldn't do, there are bad things that God doesn't want us to do. But sin is a little bit more complicated than that. Because in a way, sin is anything that can stop you from becoming everything that God has for you. Sin is the thing that can rob you from accomplishing all the purposes that God has set for your life. Without light, we can realize that sin has a lot to do with the hardness of our heart, with the unwillingness to yield before the Lord and to follow Him, and even having the attitude of settling to becoming somebody that He hasn't called us to be. In Isaiah 42, it tells us of this condition, the implications of sin in people's lives. It says, But this is a people robbed and plundered. All of them are snared in holes, and they are hidden in prison houses. They are for prey, and no one delivers. For plunder, and no one says, restore. This is a very sad picture of the implications of sin in people's lives. And it tells us here that sin comes and plunder and robs us. It takes away our freedom, our peace, our joy, and then, then put us in a cycle of guilt, shame, and bondage. And we're unable to break free on our own. But Jesus Christ came to set the captives free. And in a way, he provided a reversal of the plundering and robbing aspect of sin. In Matthew chapter 12, this is what he says. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods, unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. And I don't know if you noticed, but Jesus Christ does to sin what sin does to mankind. He says, the kingdom of God has come to you, and it's about freedom and deliverance and breaking the chains. And he says, I came, and I bound and bind the strong man, and then I plunder his goods. I delivered, I rescue, I bring out the ones that are trapped under sin. And this is very powerful because it's so easy to settle, to see our lives and our limitations, our mistakes, our sin, and say, this is how it's going to be. There's nothing I can do. I'm going to choose to live like this. And we choose a slavery over being an overcomer. And that is a lie. And we don't have to believe it because the same determination that God established in the beginning, it's true today. There is a way that we can walk in dominion and freedom and in victory. Now, in Colossians chapter 2, there's a scripture that I just want to highlight. This this verse, having discerned principalities and powers, talking about Jesus, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. See, Jesus Christ didn't do this work in secret. He didn't do it in a way that nobody knew about it. He put it as the front of the very thing that he came to do. And he made it so public and so obvious. So anyone can see the work of Jesus and say, there is a way for me to walk in freedom and victory. There's a way for me to not become under the influence of sin. And I want to speak to you and encourage you. If this is the word that you need today, you've been crying out to the Lord. I'm telling you, this is the day to make the decision. Make the commitment. Rise up and take your place because the Lord has made 
available for you not to live under the slavery and the influence and the implications of sin, but to walk in freedom. Maybe you are one that is helping somebody else. Maybe you are ministering to them. Maybe you are praying for them or teaching about this. This is our time to take our place and to believe like never before because indeed it is a new day. And this new day is bringing a new level of faith. And it's not because sin wasn't able to be overcome before, but because this is the acceptable time of our Lord, that He is showing us that we can walk in the abundance and the freedom He has for us. I bless you today, and I hope you receive this and you walk in it, because the Lord has come to set us free, and we are going to be free indeed.